Hello YouTube, today I have come to talk to you about the problem with astrophotography. And the problem is astrophotography is best done under places where the skies are clear and dark, but the issue is consistently getting clear and dark skies. It is very expensive and not accessible to a lot of people. Me and two friends are working on a solution to this problem of the accessibility to dark skies that is going to be available to people very, very shortly. So in this video, I just want to talk about um, the issues with astrophotography as it currently is in our time and what we're going to try and do about it. So for those who are unaware, astrophotography is capturing images of space. And if you can do that from a place where you can actually see the stars or under dark skies, uh, that is how you do it in the most efficient way and get the best images and the best observations possible. It's really a night and day difference between shooting an image in a place with light pollution versus without light pollution. In fact, the amount of time you save and the integration time needed to even produce a final image is exponential when you compare a dark site versus a heavily light polluted area. Like it or not, there's no way around this problem other than going to a place where you're able to do observations from dark skies. Not only do you need you know, dark skies to do observations well, if you wanna do them at all, you need a place to actually be able to set up your telescope that's safe overnight and not have your stuff get stolen or not get targeted for getting robbed by showing off that you have a bunch of expensive telescope gear. Now this is really only possible if you have a house. So yeah, this is the nature of the problem, getting consistent exposure time, ideally from dark skies. So what are the ways in which people do that these days? The first way is you own a home or you rent a home with a backyard, which is very, very, very expensive. Um, houses are not cheap and <laughs> telescopes aren't cheap either, but if you want to actually, you know, be able to do astronomy at all in person, then you need a backyard or a place where you can consistently set up your telescope and use it. And this is just not something that everyone has. And so a lot of people have telescopes like me that you just can't use because you don't live in a place with a backyard that you can actually use it consistently every night, regardless of the issues of light pollution. Heck, if I had a backyard, I would be setting up every single clear night, but I don't and I can't. Not even all backyards are okay for astrophotography. If you've got trees, you've got a lot of obstructions, you might not have good visibility to the sky, and you just probably won't be able to do much observing. So not only does it take a place with a backyard, uh, you need to be having a backyard with good sky visibility, and ideally you wanna live somewhere where it's relatively clear throughout the year. And this is all very highly specific, weird niche things that all bring us centrally back to the problem where astrophotography is inextricably linked to where we do it. And if you just don't live in those places, you can't. And I don't think that that's fair uh, for everyone. You know what I mean? I grew up uh, in Phoenix, Arizona, and I was lucky enough that I grew up in a house with a large backyard with good sky visibility. If I didn't have that, I wouldn't be an astrophotographer and I couldn't have replicated that experience for every single person on earth, that accessibility to be able to do astronomy. I was lucky enough to grow up in a place where that was easy to do. I could do it nearly every night and it was clear all the time. You know, this is not something that the whole world has access to and I'm very privileged and lucky that I got it. So, <laughs> but now I don't. I do less astrophotography in person now because I don't live with my parents anymore and I don't have a backyard. So, you know, I can highly relate to um, these struggles that probably a lot of people in astronomy are facing. So yeah, step one. one, one way people do astronomy in the modern era is have a backyard. The second option that people do uh, in this modern era is we go travel far away from where we live to go camp under dark skies and to do astronomy. Now this is honestly great and there's never going to be a substitute for actually doing this. And if we could do it every night, I'm sure we could. But the problem with traveling and camping to do astrophotography is you can't do it every night. So what are you going to do? Buy a bunch of telescope gear, astrophotography gear, and only use it once a month. Uh, it's 
very inefficient and expensive for the amount of time that you actually get you know again i was pretty lucky with where i grew up and where i live in the southwest where i'm typically you know only an hour to three hours away from driving to super dark skies and it was super easy for me to do with my car and sleeping in the back of it it's super easy for me to actually do that uh, it's not super easy for someone living on the east coast though you may have to drive six plus hours to actually go somewhere where it's acceptable to do astronomy so again it's difficult not easily accessed uh, you're going to pay for food camping travel gas um, and you will expend all the time to get yourself under those dark skies to actually make your photography happen and at a maximum rate you're probably only going to do this once a month or once every two months so and again like i'm saying there's no substitute for doing this. It's great fun. You have to be able to see the stars in person. You know, there's no experience that can top it. But when we're thinking about doing our photography and the access to dark skies and exploring space using our telescopes and cameras, it's impractical to suggest that someone should be, you know, driving out to go camping every single night to use their equipment. It's just not practical. Now, the third route for doing astrophotography or astronomy is remote observations so this is basically a place where you host your equipment and you log in every night to use your telescope in a building where the roof comes off whenever it's clear and then you're able to do your observations and then come the following morning the roof will close and your telescope gear is all safe and sound and you can rinse and repeat throughout the year using your telescope to do your imaging now this is great um, it's actually how I do the most, it's how I do the majority of my deep sky astrophotography these days because it's simply the most cost efficient way to do it. If you need all the exposure time you can get uh, in the current day, this is the cheapest way to do it. But it's still not cheap um, by hour of exposure time or by monthly rate. A peer could be, you know, 600 to 1500 a month just to host your telescope somewhere to be able to do your images. And for the average person, for most people, that is too much money. You know, everything is getting more expensive with inflation and it's just too expensive. Why? <laughs> most people can't swing that much money per month because it's not a justifiable expense for a hobby. For me as a full-time astrophotographer, it's an expense that I have to do because I'm in the process of exploring space to discover new things and in order to do that I need telescope time and this is simply currently the most efficient way to do telescope time. So that's this is the current state of things as they are. Uh, astrophotography and astronomy are limited to wealthy people for the most part. It's an expensive hobby. To do it is expensive. The equipment is expensive. We want to make this more accessible to more people. That's the dream. We want everyone to be able to explore space and to see it, to capture it, to share it. And that's, you know, the perfect world. So what are we going to do to actually make that a reality for more people than currently? I can't buy all of you houses with backyards. I would if I could. So we can cross off trying to move everyone into a place where you can do astrophotography all the time. I can't pay for everyone's expenses to go camping and shooting, so we can cross that off. The only way that we're going to be able to tackle this problem is remote observing and changing the way that things are done to make it more accessible to the average person. So the way that we intend to address this problem is by starting an observatory, and that's the thought behind Starfront Observatories, which is the project I'm starting with my two friends, and it's going to uh, actually begin construction in a couple days now. In the most traditional sense, what we're working on is a remote observatory, but the way it's going to be different is that we intend to make it a lot cheaper and a lot more accessible, especially to people with smaller telescopes who can't really afford to pay $800 a month to keep their telescope somewhere. So that is the goal. The beautiful thing about this is that a smaller telescope can be packed in more densely into an observatory. And so we can still, you know, keep this as a venture that makes money while still being accessible to more people by improving the density at which we host telescopes inside of a building. So that's the premise of the idea. We don't want this observatory to be full of necessarily ultra expensive large telescopes. 
that's not the point of what we're doing. It's going to be something different. We want this to be scalable and accessible to a wide amount of people who normally wouldn't have been able to do it in the past to help enable exploring space. So, you know, I'm thinking of uh, people that have telescope gear just sitting around and they never use it, or people that live in a place that's not super clear, or it's just impossible for you to actually enjoy what you love to do, which is exploring space on your own terms with a camera and a telescope. So the observatory itself is going to be located in the heart of Texas, in central Texas, nearest a town called Brady, Texas. And this place will have uh, Bortle 1 slash Bortle 2 skies. The elevation is about 1600 feet. We'll have gigabit internet, and we estimate that it's 200 to 220 clear nights per year on average based on historical weather data. So that's where it's going to be. Uh, the observatory itself, which will begin construction in about two days, will be two roll-off roof buildings, each one holding 50 piers, so for 100 piers total to start. Right off the bat, it's going to accommodate a very big number of piers as compared to existing remote observatories. Again, because the idea is to make it affordable and make it scalable for lots of people. Considering this, the lowest price we have for peers is going to be $199 per month for a lot of sizes of refractors. And then the price will scale up depending on the size of the instrument, of course, the size of the telescope, because bigger telescopes consume more room and so they cost more. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's the dream. And uh, it's going to become a reality uh, very soon in this month of May. So there's going to be a lot of uh, technical challenges that we're going to address along the way. And most of that is going to happen over the next month or two. We're going to be making 100 peers, installing a lot of telescopes. I know a lot of you probably have a bunch of questions. <laughs> if you're interested in, sell in sending a telescope, I will say the, the first building in our observatory for 50 peers we have um, 50 people slated to go into that building already. So we actually have the second one going in, which we're taking reservations for now. You can find a link for that in the description if you're interested. Let us know your telescope setup um, and any other questions you might have about the observatory. Um, some things people may wonder right off the bat is, uh, what do we do about support, remote support, if something needs to happen with your setup, uh, what's gonna happen? So we'll have an on-site tech to deal with technical issues that you can't address being remote wherever you may live. So that you won't have to worry about as much. Um, if you're concerned about how do I get into remote observing, I've never done it before, it seems a little scary to me. That's totally understandable. I'm gonna be putting together here in the next week or so a video kind of guiding you through uh, how to get yourself prepared for remote imaging. If you are interested, but you've never done it, um, it's a lot less scary than you think it is, which is really great. Uh, if you're using an ASI Air or something similar, if you're even automating your telescope in a backyard or while you're on the go, then you're already doing remote imaging. It's the exact same. You're just a little bit further from your telescope and there's a couple things, a couple extras that will make your life easier that I will suggest that you get to, uh, to make it happen. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a lot less complicated and confusing than you think it may be. Around remote observing, there's a lot of, uh, how do you call it, like old head mythology about what works, what doesn't, what you have to do for remote observing. You know, I don't wanna be beholden to those kinds of things. <laughs> um, you don't need super ultra premium gear to make this work, so don't be afraid about that. Again, I'm not, I'm not interested in gatekeeping astronomy from everyone, so uh, it's a lot more accessible and easy than you may think it is. That's the, that's the mission of the Starfront Observatory, is to make astronomy, dark skies, accessibility uh, better for everyone. If this works out well uh, with this first observatory, we're not going to stop at this one. Uh, the intent is to continue to grow, to continue to scale, to just make dark skies more commonplace easier to access for everyone, and that's what we really want to accomplish. So if you like that mission, if you want to take part in the observatory, if you want to host a telescope, and you want to prove this idea and uh, <laughs> improve the accessibility for everyone, then please click the link in the description 
and I'll reach out to you uh, about the observatory. I'll give you some more information. And yeah, yeah, I'm super excited for this next month. And you're gonna be seeing a lot of video photos from me about the construction of the observatory, the installation of the first telescopes. And I'm looking forward to uh, changing astronomy with y'all. So if you're interested, click the link in the description. I'll see y'all in the next one.